Hi, this is Brother Richard. Richard. Today we're continuing our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 414. We're continuing in our lesson theme, Life in the Beginning of Sorrows. This will be part 2. We want to take a look at conditions, activities that will take place after the great judgment is pronounced and the beginning of sorrows changes all things. Scripture teaches the beginning of sorrows will see the collapse of all the governments and human societies on the face of the earth and through demonic incitation and spoken judgments against them all the armies of the world will be destroyed. They'll be destroyed either through demonic incitation or spoken judgment. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. <clears throat> this is demonic incitation on a global scale. People will suddenly be incited <clears throat> to destroy one another. There was a scripture, uh, I forget which, uh, with the prophet that said, every man's sword will be against his brother. When the Lord pronounces his judgment, he releases demons from the subterranean who will influence the human race. And this is as a result of that influence. <clears throat> Turn to Ezekiel 32, verse 18. Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations into the neither parts of the earth with them that go down to the pit. Now this is <clears throat> destruction of the armies through judgment. The Lord speaks the great pronunciation in the armies of Egypt, Iran, Turkey, <coughs> uh, Lebanon, e, e, uh, the, the Lebanese, the Syrians, all the terrorist armies mm. through judgment are going to be taken bodily down to hell. So between these two, all the armies of the human race are going to be neutralized. Mm. And at that point, the Fourth Empire will be released to sweep across the earth. So when Israel retaliates, which it will, they said they're going to do so by November the 5th, mm -hmm. against Iran I'm talking about, Iran's going to have a taste, just a, a precursor of what's going to be yes. happening here. Yes. Uh, it's fascinating what's happening over in Israel because she's attacking them in ways they never believed. Sure. Before take place. I believe that's been inspired by YHVH. Amen. <clears throat> well, let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates at this time the earth will be segmented by the Luciferians of the Fourth Empire. Daniel 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. 
Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Now the word break comes from a Hebrew term, the cock, which means to stamp flat. So it's going to tread it down and stamp it in pieces, segments. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. There's not a question that I've asked you that you couldn't answer, so I'm going to ask you this. <laughs> this diversity mm -hmm. that this fourth empire is going to bring up the kingdom, mm -hmm. diverse like never before. Can you give us an example? Well, the conditions would be such that the reason it's called the verse is because the beings that constitute the fourth empire, kings and inhabitants, are pluralistic beings. And so they're going to shift the environment <clears throat> from a linear to a pluralistic environment that suits them, not the humans. You're going to have uh, spiritual things becoming visible. You're going to have alterations in the makeup of the structure of the former Adamic creation. Things are going to be altered and shifted to a point where man is going to be so confined because he's going to be in a strange environment in which he cannot really function freely. He'd be a rat in a cage. Yes. Yeah. In other words, all they're doing is bringing back the conditions that once existed on the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, what we exist in today is a poisoned uh, jail cell in comparison to uh, what the earth once was. Uh, <clears throat> they are basically going to bring uh, their regions into a paradise uh, suited for them. You know, the Harlot City is a paradise region. And so all the other, Lucifer's um, um, region is going to be, with the exception of where the church community is, uh, a paradise section. They're not going to live in the slum that the human race currently sure. lives in, with the, with the limitations that the human race is living in. Atmosphere is going to totally change. It's going to be much denser than what you have now, because the atmosphere we live in is just a paper-thin uh, uh, partition <clears throat> filters out some of the sunlight. That's why we age so rapidly. Uh, during the former times, men would live a thousand years. Uh, so when the Luciferians make their appearance, they're going to bring with them an environment that is rich, but the human race isn't going to benefit by it. They're going to benefit by it because the human race is going to be enslaved to the gods that are running the fourth empire. But let's go on. <clears throat> They're going to stamp it flat. What does that mean? It means the former human metropolises are going to be rendered ruined. You're going to have islands rising up out of the sea. You're going to have a sea that didn't exist before that becomes connected to the earth. Everything is going to radically change. We want to take a look a little bit at some of this description. Scripture teaches <clears throat> the cities will be destroyed. Jeremiah 4 verse 26 <clears throat> what will happen is that the humans are going to be confined to the former ruined Adamic order those that worship the gods are going to be taken into the regions where the gods exist of course <clears throat> and uh, be their slaves their servants What's the difference between those two groups? Which two groups? Those who will be kept in the ruins of the Adamic societies mm -hmm. and those who will be in the environs of the gods, the, the, those who worship the gods. Well, a multitude of differences. There's no one, one thing that's <coughs> going to be similar to any other. Mm. You're looking at a uh, reconstructed reality. 
what depending I'm, upon the God that's dominating okay. them. Okay, so what I was getting to was, will there be those who worship the gods who do not live in the environment of that God? Uh, <clears throat> depends. Some will live in the environment of the God, mm. partake to a certain degree of the glories of that environment, but be a slave to the God that's running the, the situation. Across the, across the face of the earth, it's, it's going to be radically different, never experienced before by the human race. Those that are left behind divided into two groups, which I'm going to go into. Right. <clears throat> Jeremiah 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void in the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. The word presence here is face, panim. The face of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. Now we want to focus on this, the fruitful place. It's a region formally fruitful. Uh, when you read Genesis 49th chapter and Jacob is talking about the destiny of his sons and he gets to Joseph. He says, Joseph will be a fruitful bough <clears throat> whose uh, leaves run over the wall. So the fruitful place is the region where Joseph his descendants dwell. <coughs> Ephraim, Manasseh. The fruitful place at this point was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. So they underwent the judgment. <coughs> but but this is not the end. Verse 27. For thus saith, for thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, the fruitful place, yet I will not make a full end. What does that mean? That means that there are going to be regions that are not going to be totally destroyed in the fruitful place. Why? Right, they're going to be preserved. For the songs. For the ones that are counted worthy to escape all these things. things. So we should it's understand religion. that. Mm -hmm. So we should understand that those places that you just described will become the foundation for the church societies. Uh, well, they're going to be temporary places that will be regions in which those that are gathered there are going to be able to learn, okay. be prepared. Then they're going to be called out of that to go to gotcha. <coughs> the presence of the Lord when he returns gotcha. okay. to set up the community. Okay. So it's a two-stage operation. Right. Then you can say that in that first stage, they hid. Yes. Well, this is going to take place after the judgment. Mm. Uh, you're going to see, and I've had dreams about this, where you have buildings that are totally, man, palatial. Skyscrapers, nobody in them. Mm. Uh, they're going to be places that are preserved for the faithful, wise servant. And all the necessities are going to be there for the faithful, wise servant to feed God's sheep. What period of time are we talking about? Is this post-tribulation uh, or just during the tribulation? Oh, this is a gathering. After the judgment is pronounced, <coughs> human order is wiped out. Fourth Empire takes over. The former regions. Here we're talking about the fruitful place. The fruitful place actually is talking about America and uh, probably Britain and other areas. Desolation. The cities are wiped out. But God is going to preserve certain areas which won't totally be wiped out. Mm -hmm. He's going to preserve them for the people that have been counted worthy to escape the desolation of the judgment. 
<clears throat> they will remain there until the time of the Lord's return to gather them out to the place where <clears throat> they're going to be assembled to go to the community. Does that explain why in one of your dreams you were, uh, and I think you had a very similar dream because you described something to me uh, uh, similar. Groups of us were moving from place to place, <clears throat> trying not to be caught by you know, those who were out yes. and about. Yes. So that's between the judgment and the uh, gathering. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, <clears throat> scripture teaches <clears throat> there will be areas preserved for those accounted worthy to escape all these things. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So it's twofold. You escape the devastation that comes from the judgment and then you're going to be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man when he returns mm -hmm. to set up the communities. So there's going to be a space of time between. between the pronunciation of the judgment, the desolation, the establishment of Shishak Empire, <coughs> the teaching, preparing those <coughs> elders for the time when they'll enter the communities. Because we have to understand, they will know, they will start off with nothing, total ignorance. You're going to have to inculcate them with a foundation. They aren't ready to go into the communities at this point because they have no comprehension right. of anything. <clears throat> You'll be preparing them to understand the God's master plan. He's going to set up a hierarchy. He's going to set up a community where you can learn what you need to learn about where you are going, destiny in the heavens. Well, before they can comprehend that, they have to be given a foundation. What is an elder? Right. A guy coming out of the religion of Islam, who the nations have just been radically wiped out, he, that's all he knows. Sure. He doesn't know anything else. You have to give him a foundation that you can build on, and by the time you get it built, the Lord is returning, and then that goes into operation. <clears throat> so the scripture <clears throat> indicates, we said that there were going to be places preserved. Well, these are enclave, enclaves in the midst of desolation. Mm. It's like you can see a region in which you have a habitation. You can thrive in this region. But in the background is ruin, total desolation. A uh, place where you, if you walk into those places, it's a death trap. Fires all over the place. Uh, um, a total uh, ruin, collapsed buildings, uh, structures that are uh, integrated with uh, mountains and, and, and valleys and uh, uninhabited regions where the land is encroached onto the cities. Everything is a ruin. God has preserved the place for his people. It's temporary. This is what's being said. <clears throat> Now we see this further illustrated, turn to Deuteronomy 32, because it's from this environment that the, the, the 10 tribes are gonna be gathered back to Israel and the church is gonna be gathered back to its communities. Deuteronomy 32, 10. Starting in verse 10. <clears throat> he found him in a desert land 
And in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. We want to dissect this scripture. He found him in a desert land. The collapse of the Adamic order <clears throat> where there is devastation, ruin, inhospitable, unlivable conditions, a moonscape, a furnace of fire, devastation. But within that, in the foreground, are the descendants of a tribe that have been gathered. <clears throat> I believe the 12 tribes, the 10 tribes, constitute the nations of Western Europe. Mm -hmm. The two tribes, <clears throat> Judah, where you have no nation outside of the nation of Israel because they've been gathered back. Levi is there with Judah because they're the priest tribe. The other 10 nations are going to come out of Western Europe and <clears throat> which will be devastated just like America. And you see a picture here of people living in a community where they're able to survive and thrive, but in the background is wasted devastation. This is the picture you get here. Benjamin is part of Judah. No, Benjamin is a separate tribe. Is Benjamin part of the tent? Yeah, but Benjamin is going to be gathered with the tent. Benjamin okay. is not in the land yet. Okay. He found him in a desert land. In other words, YHVH and his hierarchy at a signal from the Lord, after the Lord returns, is going to be sent forth to lead these people out of the ruined desolation of the former Adamic order to the land of promise. So it talks about, he goes in, he finds them. <clears throat> the backdrop is a waste howling wilderness. Mm -hmm. He enters into the preserve region and he takes the people out. Follow me. He leaves them out. Notice what he says. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. This is the desolation of the Adamic race. He's leading them to the promised land through total ruin, devastation, atomic wars, uh, all sorts of um, destruction. But they are supernaturally protected. It's almost like <clears throat> the time they left Egypt. They went through a wilderness. This one's going to be worse. Uh, wrecked vehicles, the total bombed out cities, the whole shot. YHVH is leading them supernaturally over this ruined landscape back to the promised land. <clears throat> he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with him. Now why does it say that? There was no strange God with him. Because the fourth empire is all over the place. They dominate the earth. But they're not going to interfere with this transit back to the land. YHVH is alerting everybody that he is taking these humans on a journey with him. Ordinarily, if the gods see humans, they're gone, they're toast. But YHVH, is, the scripture is telling us, he's their protector. He's comforting them. He's uh, uh, prospering them even as they go. No strange god is going to interfere with that. So we see the picture. One scripture clarifies another scripture. This is a waste wilderness region as a result of the judgment, as a result of the ensuing activities after the judgment. The, the uh, uh, 12 tribes have been preserved. The rest of the human race isn't even there. They're where they're going to be, either under the guides or dead. So we see this situation taking place here. They're being led back to the promised land. Same thing is going to happen with 
the elder group under the Prototokis leadership. They're going to be in preserved areas awaiting the time in which they will leave to go back to the presence of the Lord. And it's going to happen in a two-fold section. Turn to Luke 17. Luke 17. <clears throat> Understand now that they're in these temporary sanctuaries <clears throat> learning at the hand of the <clears throat> Prototokos teachers and at a certain time we're going to start with Bertie, uh, Luke 17 starting with 34 no let's not do 34 let's do we're going to go let's start with I'll give you a clearer picture on this uh, verse 30 Verse 30 tells us the Son of Man has been revealed. They see the Lord in the heavens descending toward the earth. Everybody sees him. Even that shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which is, shall be upon the housetop and the stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. That he is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Why is he saying that? They are in a preserved community. Mm -hmm. They have thrived because of the protection that they have had under the leadership of the Prototokos. <clears throat> the day that the Lord returns, he descends to the earth in a glory. He is giving instructions to all the prototokias that have been preserved in these regions. Verse 32, remember Lot's wife. She got destroyed because she wanted to hold on to her life rather than lose it. Yep. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So what's being said here? In these preserved communities, they have prospered. Those who have been diligent to receive what the Prototokos teachers have given them are now prepared for the release to go to the presence of the Lord. Those who have not are going to find themselves in very egregious situations. They're being warned. You got your stuff up there. The community is getting ready to be abandoned. You had better prepare for whatever it is you need to do because you ain't going with everybody else because you weren't ready. So what happens to that Protodicus student who isn't prepared or someone who's not a Protodicus student who happens to be in that environment? Well, hold that question. Because we're talking about just before they go into the... Yeah, hold that question. Okay. We're going to return to that. Okay. Right now we're focusing on those who are prepared and who are ready. Okay. The, those who are going to come under the injunction, whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Now we're looking at the method in which the community is going to be <coughs> uh, addressed. Prototokos leaders are going to supernaturally be taken out first. They are going to be uh, basically, uh, the word is um, caught up, uh, be on their own devices because they are now counted worthy to receive their reward, their inheritance. So they'll be, they become angels essentially. Yeah. Yes. When they get to the presence of the Lord. Right. But the, the, the transit to the presence of the Lord is going to be supernatural. Uh, this guy's in bed. He's sleeping. Yet mm -hmm. still, shh, he's gone. He's gone. Two shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken. The other left. So you see they're in community, communal living. Grinding. That's a primitive form of uh, 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 t 
washing your clothes, sure. uh, making your food. Yeah. One is taken, the other is left. Why? Because one is a teacher, prototokis, uh, counted worthy for reward now, and that individual is going to the presence of the Lord. Two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. <clears throat> so they're going to be in different stages of activity, uh, focusing on uh, servicing the community, uh, teaching, <clears throat> doing the necessary chores to keep the community going, and those that have been the leaders responsible for preparing the community are going to be taken, uh, <clears throat> caught up, supernaturally, probably by an angels, will carry them supernaturally into the presence of the Lord to receive their rewards. Right. Notice what he says. <clears throat> Verse 37, They answered and said unto them, Where? Lord, in other words, where are they ta being taken? He said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. The eagles are the teachers. The body is the the, the, the gathering where all from a global community of teachers are gathered. <laughs> Ephesians, <clears throat> first chapter. Nine and ten. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he, the Father, hath purposed in himself. This is the way he's calling it. This is the way it's going to happen. Then, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, the dispensation of the fullness of times, meaning after all of this that you have now, after the pronunciation of the judgment, after the collapse of the human order, the governments and the armies <coughs> leveling out human <coughs> influence, neutralizing it, bringing in the fourth empire to dominate it. After all that, this is going to take place. <coughs> that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Notice what he's going on to say, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <clears throat> so what he's saying here is those who have been predestinated for the inheritance are going to be gathered to the presence of the Lord at this time to receive their inheritance. <clears throat> then, then, you're going to have the communities brought out of where they are, turned in Jeremiah 23. The Lord himself is going to do this. After he bestows the inheritance on the Prototokos teachers, Notice what he says in 2 to 3. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have driven and scattered my flock and driven them away. Have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. That's the judgment. That's Jeremiah 25, 30 to 33. He pronounces judgment on the pastors, the, 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 the howling shepherds. Then, after he pronounces the judgment, he initiates <coughs> the group gathering of those that are going to be prepared for the communities. The faithful servant comes in. After that, if the faithful servant receives his inheritance, verse 3. 
and I, I, will gather the remnant, remnant. Why is he saying the remnant? Because the Prototokos teachers are gone. What's left? The Prototokos students. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds. They shall be fruitful and increase. He's going to bring them to the communities. <clears throat> Notice verse 4. And, and I will set, set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. They shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking. Who's the shepherds? The uh, angels. Over the community. Okay. Now, this is what the Lord himself says. Turn to John, 10th chapter. Gospel of John, 10th chapter. John, the 10th chapter. Verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is Jeremiah 23, verse 3. He's saying, I will bring them. They will hear my voice. It hasn't happened yet. Well, it didn't happen before he was crucified. This is going to happen to gathering. <clears throat> it's amazing, M -m miraculous, if, if I'm looking at this right. The way the Father has this thing uh, uh, being brought out. This place is going to collapse. The fourth empire is going to change everything. <clears throat> this pseudo-reality you're dealing with will be a fading memory. You will be given the status that is befitting you over wide variety. Many, many, many students in a community preserved for you. The backdrop is a ruin. You will bring them up to the part where they are ready to receive then you are going to be taken supernaturally and receive your inheritance. From there, you're going to be given the position of rulership over the whole household. Your students then will be brought to the communities prepared for them on earth. You will oversee that community from heaven, dealing with the apostles and prophets of that community until the time of the evaluation. This is all Revelation chapter uh, one, to, 1 to 3. Okay. After that time, then everything reaches a culmination and rapture takes place. Let me bring you back to Jeremiah 23. Okay. <clears throat> then verse 3. Jeremiah 23. 23 verse 3. Verse 3, mm -hmm. okay. And I will gather the remnant of my flock. Mm -hmm. Just before that, mm -hmm. we have a group who are protected before they reach the church communities. Most of those in that group who are protected before they reach the church communities will go to the church communities. Mm -hmm. Some of them will not because they want to hold on to their lives. Yes. The day before everything I've just said, they were considered righteous. No. Okay. No. How do they get to the point where they are hid then? The same way, well, originally, during the, during the pronouncement, they were righteous. That's what I'm saying. So they came from the pronouncement righteous perspective. Yeah, that's how they the, get into the... The, the... the group, okay. So they're now you know, in this uh, little environment, hid, but they choose to 
want to hold on to a life they previously had, a life that no longer no, exists. No, no, They want to hold on to the life they have. They didn't get their stuff and take it with them right. to this place. Okay. They got their stuff as a result. At that place, of, okay. Yeah. Do you do describe that as the beginning of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The prosperity. Is that a later scene church type thinking? Yeah, sure. Every time this happens, it's the same thing. Mm. You're going to have a group that's faithful. You're going to have, everybody is faithful at first. Then you're going to have temptation come in, and people are going to start to fall away. Do they receive a warning? If you guys don't get this together, you're not going to end up in oh, the undoubtedly, the undoubtedly. So what happens to those who don't, who fail completely? They're going to be... <laughs> They're going to be the victims of circumstance. Right. After everybody's gone, I don't right. wind up serving some guy. So it will, it, the, the you're in the fourth overrun. empire environment. You're not going to last long. Okay. So in the same way that the church communities at the end will be overrun, that gathering will be overrun. Okay. I get it now. Yes, there's an attrition rate. Hmm. The attrition rate is huge. The human race doesn't change. It's just amazing. It's the same. <clears throat> Look. Every time you have a movement, you're going to have faith. Everybody starts off faithfully at first. Yep. Then you always have a drop-off rate. Sure. This happened in the church. You didn't even give them time to uh, get settled before you had an Ananias and Sapphira. Want right. to hold on to their stuff? Right. Right. It's the same thing. Human nature doesn't change. Sure. And the enemy knows that, and so he's always dangling. The golden carrot in front mm -hmm. of somebody to see who's going to be who's a taker. It's going to happen in the community. Sure. And, and anywhere you go, this side of heaven, as long as you're on earth, as long as you're open to, it's going to happen in the millennium period. Right. You're going to have majority of the people don't make it after right. a thousand years of uh, of um, paradise and and glory in the presence of the Lord. They still don't make it. Incredible. But for those that do, they're going to receive the fullness of what's waiting for them. Praise the Lord. Brother Jones. Yes, sir. I think it's about time I make mention of the appreciation that I have that you continue coming here, which isn't too far from my house, that I can drive here and get fed how many times a week, Brother Jones, is it four or five? <coughs> five. But the thing of it is, is, Mr. Jones, I know that pleases the Father. Amen. That I'm making the effort to connect with you personally and, and gather, get fed, and pursue his kingdom and my position in it. And Brother Jones, thank you for your committed stance that you have so appropriately done you set the example for Chris and I. And I want to thank you for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Absolutely. the only thing I could say to that is it's the least I could do. 